morning, good morning. Here we are once again on uh, Facebook Live. This is Art Talk. Welcome to the show. If this is your new, your first time and you're a newbie, uh, we're going to talk about some uh, some great stuff today. Good morning, uh, Chris, Scott. Good to see you. Uh, today is a, um, a gloriously gloomy day. It's not gloom. It's uh, overcast, silvery. Uh, Revo, good morning. Uh, I don't know how far the silverness goes south uh, to you guys or not, but uh, it certainly is here. Uh, yesterday, uh, uh, Kathy and I, uh, for lunchtime, we tend, tend to uh, look for some sun, and uh, we found some yesterday, which is pretty cool. Let me move this a little bit closer. Good deal. Good deal. Uh, welcome, guys. Um, where am I, Mark Truman says. I don't know. Where are you, Mark? Um, hmm. That's a good question. <laughs> Gilman's in the house and Michael Malia. Good morning, Michael from Australia. It's got to be one or two in the morning. Dennis Burnham's here. Uh, Dennis, are you at Lake Elsinore uh, or are you still back here? I think you guys moved permanently. Are you in uh, Lake Elsinore? This is Art Talk uh, episode 280. And uh, not only are we live on Facebook, we are now on YouTube uh, afterwards. So uh, you guys can have a permanent place that you can uh, check out some of these episodes. Uh, today's episode, let me straighten that up a little bit. Today's episode, uh, The Seven Habits of Successfully Creative People. Mm, seven habits. There's a lot. There's a lot of habits uh, to get into, but uh, I try to focus on uh, the best ones uh, so that um, uh, 1 a.m., Thursday. Michael, uh, good morning. 1 a.m. and it's tomorrow. Michael's in the future. <laughs> Tell us what's going to happen. Uh, let us know uh, where, you know, where life's going to be tomorrow. Uh, I think, I think it's going to be good. Okay, we're adjusted. Okay. Uh, welcome. I am Fireball and we do Art Talk live on Facebook every weekday morning, uh, Pacific Standard Time uh, from uh, Malibu, California, 8 a.m., uh, wherever you are in the world, uh, it's not if it's not 8 a.m. and you're not in Malibu, you're somewhere else. Then just kind of check mark this time to come and join us, hang out with us. Uh, my name is Fireball, and my company is Fireball Publishing. Uh, I uh, have done a design in the film industry for many, many years, probably 30, 35 years now as a designer, everything from vehicles to weapons, props, sets, costumes, all that kind of stuff. The movie industry is shut down right now, so I'm not working on that stuff, uh, but my publishing side uh, creates uh, uh, automotive and sea life coloring books, things like Hollywood Muscle, which is one of the books that came out a little bit. Let's take a look at a sketch for today. These are all the different books that we have. Uh, we have 31, soon to be 32 books because Camaro's coming out. Uh, I have a sketch to show you guys from the new Camaro book. How about a Jurassic Park, slammed Jurassic Park Explorer? Kind of a uh, hyper version. Oh, there's the bad guy up in the corner. Yeah, you barely even see him. Uh, there's a lot of, uh, of Easter eggs in these books. Uh, which I, I think uh, kids will enjoy, little hidden things that uh, you uh, see from time to time. Here's uh, my version of a, a weapon on top of uh, the original Knight Rider. Yep, most of them had just like a little gun at the top, kind of like something out of uh, Maxwell Smart's Sunbeam Tiger. Uh, and then a sketch for the new Camaro book. Here it comes. This is sketch number four from the Camaro book. This is a 1972. Yeah, badass right there. Uh, if I had a motor like that, I probably wouldn't be able to see where I'm going. So who cares? <laughs> yeah, just kind of put it in there. So uh, the Camaro book comes out June 1st. Very excited about that. Ivan, Lance Rhodes, thanks for joining us today. Our talk uh, here in Torrance, moving to Lake Havasu, Arizona. That's right, uh, Dennis. You're still in Torrance, though. Uh, soon to be in Lake Havasu. And then we're all going to go to Lake Havasu and hang out with Dennis at his pad and uh, sip margaritas and swim <laughs> when all this stuff gets... Uh, lessened up. Uh, I am swapping the 2020 Mazda Miata, which I've been driving today. Uh, I'm going to be swapping that out for the Volkswagen Atlas, which I believe is their SUV. Excited about that because uh, I have not driven that many Volkswagens and we'll get a chance to explore the SUV and see whether it's something that you guys might like. I'm not sure what the price point is on that car. But uh, we, we're going to go pick up my granddaughter Abigail in that car and see whether she likes it. And she likes it, then, then it's all good. Juice time. Juice. Good morning. Ooh, look at that. It even comes with a strawberry on it. Mmm. 
Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, come down a little bit closer. What's the shirt you're wearing today? I don't know. Mm. We go on California Strong. That shirt uh, is from Eric and Celeste from the song that they did, that they created for the Woolsey Fire. That's right. This is delicious. Strawberry, orange juice, protein milk, protein powder. And a little superfood. Oh, damn. I thought I had it all. <laughs> okay. Mm. Delicious. Good. It comes with a strawberry. Yeah. Thank you very much. You're welcome. <laughs> Thank God for this lady. She keeps me healthy every day. Uh, Mike Chaffer's uh, Richard Woodland. Good morning, guys. Mm. I'm going to place that juice with my coffee. Put that over here somewhere. Don't want stuff spilling. So today we're going to talk about the seven habits of successfully creative people. I'm not talking about necessarily uh, financially successful, although in our society that's an indication that you're successful. But many people create terrible movies and they're very wealthy. Uh, they create uh, uh, pieces of art that you're kind of scratching your head going, that's worth how much? And it's like a dot in the middle of this big canvas, a single dot, and it's selling for a million bucks. Uh, you know, I, I guess that's expressive uh, and that uh, can be considered successful. But I'm talking about a you feeling successful on a daily basis. Uh, you can adopt some habits that are going to help you uh, uh, to achieve that. And those small steps lead to great changes. It's important to recognize that is that you don't have to make huge changes in your life. You can if you want to. Uh, but you, in order to create massive change, uh, you just have to be consistent and go in the, the direction of the things that you want to achieve for your life. So pretty simple. Uh, once again, to understand, not so simple to necessarily implement in your life. If you have something that's truly challenging, like let's say you are uh, destitute and you don't have any money or you are uh, severely overweight and you want to lose some weight, uh, it's very challenging to say, I, I need to lose 125 pounds, right? Uh, you can't just, uh, you know, some people go to the doctor and they cut out stuff, right? And that's their way of losing weight. Uh, but what's important to recognize is that small changes, small daily habits uh, change, uh, uh, make great changes, amazing changes. So it's important to recognize that. But from the creative side, from the artistic side, from uh, the side which we all cultivate, uh, as creativity. We are creative beings. This is what we're here to do. Uh, whether you want to create a, an amazing meal or whether you want to create a uh, a, a new lifestyle. Uh, uh, Dennis Burnham is moving to uh, Lake Havasu. That's going to be a whole new creation. There are all kinds of amazing things are going to come from his uh, desire to move. And, and anytime you move, uh, actually Kathy's sister just moved from New Jersey to Saratoga Springs. This is a little bit hot still. Maybe it's not It's not the light so much. Oh, that's a little bit better. Uh, uh, just moved to Saratoga Springs, so uh, she's kind of developed a whole new life for herself, a whole new group of people, and, and lots of neat things are going to be going to evolve from that. So with this whole virus thing that's going on, it's a tremendous opportunity to not allow fear to seep itself in and keep you from making changes, but to look at this opportunity is like, well, now I have, I have time to read. I have time to do a lot of the things I wouldn't normally do. You have to take advantage of that time. And speaking of reading, I want to recommend an author that many of you probably have heard of before, but now is your time to spend uh, 15, 20 minutes, half an hour a day to read a bit of Joseph Murphy, uh, an incredible uh, author and uh, on the subject of which we discuss uh, many of the things on Art Talk. Uh, he is a, was a student of Neville Goddard. Uh, in the line of, uh, of understanding that your subconscious is God, they are one and the same, it is source, and that all things emanate from that. Everything that has been created, everything in this room, everything uh, uh, in this town, everything in this city, everything on this planet and in the, the universe was created from one source. Uh, and when we tap into that source, uh, there isn't anything that we can't do. And today we're gonna talk about uh, uh, instilling some habits. Uh, what what causes us to not achieve the things that we, we want are that we are cultivating the wrong habits. We're cultivating the opposite of the things that we want. Whether we recognize it or not, a lot of it is a subconscious process. We don't know that we're doing it, so it's important to weed those things out and to develop those, those new habits. Uh, as a reminder, our talk is on YouTube now as well. So if you uh, uh, watch it live, good, that great. Thanks for joining us. Ken Vella's in the house. What's up, Ken? 
Uh, and uh, anybody who wants to join us, uh, Eve Hanmore, thanks for joining us. Michael Malia, I'm going, I'll be back, going to make a coffee. Good for you, buddy. <laughs> He's probably making coffee right now. Now we can talk about him. Oh, I'm just kidding. Uh, so if, uh, if you missed it live here, if you miss uh, throughout the day, being able to watch it uh, on Facebook as it goes up, it will be permanently on YouTube, on our, our YouTube channel, which is, uh, you can just go to Fireball Tim or Fireball Malibu Vlog, which is the name of the show. 980 episodes, we're closing in on 1,000 episodes. Uh, and we're um, incorporating some new stuff. We're kind of rethinking the channel, rethinking uh, the things that you guys want. It seems that Art Talk uh, so far is very successful and uh, you guys appreciate uh, these kinds of talks. I think it's important for everybody, especially in this time, to be able to look at their lives in a way that uh, uh, helps them to expand and enhance and be more creative. So today we're going to talk about the seven habits of successfully creative people so that at the end of the day, you can say, I had a successful day. I did everything I could to uh, to bring that about, and uh, and we're going to um, uh, uh, make those small steps daily, and those small steps are going to lead to great change. Robert Smith, thanks for watching. Step number one, uh, this is important. If you were to put uh, 500 of the most successful people on the planet in one room, that'd be kind of tough, but you could do that, and uh, ask them what time they get up in the morning uh, on in general, uh, number one, they would say they get up early. Uh, on average, they get up between 4 and 5 o'clock. 4 and 5 a.m. is what time they get up because that time is crucial. That time is important. Uh, your, your subconscious, you have just come out of sleep. You're, you're in that twilight state, uh, which is very amenable, and it's important to start to feed your mind early on. Uh, and those that are getting up at uh, 8, 9, 10 o'clock in the morning uh, are missing that opportunity. Now, many of you may be night people, uh, may enjoy being uh, uh, um, up at night and staying up late, and, and, and I can understand that. But many of uh, successful people will stay up late as well, as well as get up early, uh, is get into the habit of getting less sleep, uh, taking advantage of more time, uh, instead of saying that, well, I, I need 10 hours. You know, you need 10 hours because you're simply stating I need 10 hours. If you begin to state something different, uh, I don't need 10 hours, I need eight hours and begin to start cultivating that habit, then your your experience will start to reflect those statements. It's important to understand is that the, the thoughts that we think and the words that we use and the actions that we take make up our world. So it's important to understand that the thoughts that you're cultivating uh, are the thoughts in the right direction. The words that you use, like I need 10 hours of sleep, that is simply a statement uh, of your belief system, which can be changed at any time. You can say, I need one hour. I, you, can, you can say anything you want. It, it doesn't really matter. Um, it, it comes down to what, what your belief system is, what you believe that you need, but you can change that depending on the, uh, your desires and your um, motivation to, to succeed, to motivation, to have that extra time to be able to do things necessary to cultivate and to build uh, um, a life that, that you consider to be that, that perfect life. Salvatore Car Carbone, uh, William Robertson, thanks for joining us. So number one is to, is to get up early. It's, it's, a, it's an important thing for me. This is something that I've cultivated for a long time. And uh, those morning hours are important to me because I'm not getting phone calls. I'm not getting interrupted, which leads uh, to another one of these habits uh, we'll, get, we'll get into. But it, it is my time. It's my time because uh, it, I am up early, even though there is parts of the country, parts of the world that are up. I get less calls from the UK, Japan, and Australia at 4 a.m. my time. Uh, and uh, uh, then, then the amount of stuff that happens online uh, at around six, seven, eight o'clock in the morning, uh, people start to wake up and things start to happen. So getting up early is a very important one for me. Uh, number two, be consistent uh, with your narrative. Being consistent with your narrative. And that simply means that if you have a goal that you want to achieve that's over here, you need to use these three things, your thoughts, your words, and your actions that are leading, are taking you to that goal. If your goal is to get a new car, if your goal is to uh, lose weight, if your goal is to expand yourself spiritually, if your goal is to make more money, then you have to be consistent with your narrative, is that you can't be like this, making your way to this goal. Because every time you're going this way, you're not going to this goal. Excuse me. 
getting some stuff coming in. Okay, so it's important that the steps that you take in your thoughts, that all your thoughts have to lead toward that goal. All the words that you speak have to be consistent in going to the goal that you want to achieve. And certainly the actions that you take, those, those actions have to propel you forward, okay? Propel you in the, the direction of your goal. Now, sometimes things will happen uh, that looks like uh, it's uh, ruining your 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 goal. It's ruining the opportunity, but it's not because uh, once again, it's not the thing that happens. It's the way that we perceive that thing. As an example, uh, if you're doing a car show and the car show has to be canceled, has to be pushed out to next year, and you're upset about it, you're angry about it, uh, um, you look at it like it's uh, a disappointment, all of those thoughts and actions toward that thing will consi consistently uh, make that situation bad for you. The moment that you can accept and say, hey, no, this is a blessing. This is a gift. I don't know why, and I don't know how yet but this is a gift and this gift will reveal itself to me, right? So it's important to understand that, that something that comes to you that's a disappointment, something that comes to you that is seemingly negative, it is only negative because you are defining it that way. So it's important that that things as they come to us, we don't criticize them, we don't, uh, we don't uh, uh, put our mindset or our words on the negative side, uh, that we look towards those things with, um, uh, with hope and with faith that things are going to work out the way that they that we want them to. And this is just simply a step in that. So being consistent with your narrative is uh, as heading towards your goal and not uh, uh, allowing yourself to, to be all over the place. Okay. Uh, number three, uh, to get in touch with source, obviously, is that Everything that has been created, and I said this earlier, everything that's been created on the planet, in this, uh, you know, in this room, in my, on my house, uh, uh, in, in this town, wherever else, everything that's been created comes from the inside out. Your experience of the world, how you're experiencing the world is not coming to you. It's emanating from you. You are pushing this out, and then you're seeing that on the screen of life. Okay? So it's important to recognize this, is that anything that you want it, it can't come to you, okay? It may look like it comes to you, but it doesn't, like juice. It looks like Kathy brought me juice, but she didn't bring me juice. I have set up a situation that attracts that, it is that, that we want to bring you guys juice. We want you, you guys, we want you guys to be healthy. We want you guys to cultivate habits that bring you health so that, that in, in five years, uh, we're still going to a car show together, you know, that you guys aren't on, on, in a hospital bed or, or heaven help, uh, help you, you're not even here uh, because you have not cultivated habits that, that are uh, habits of health and habits of a, of a positive mindset. We want you guys to cultivate those things. And we want you guys to share that as well. We, we, you know, it's important. Uh, each one of us is a conduit, right? So it's important that the things that I give you I was given. I've been given by Joseph Murphy, by Neville Goddard, by a lot of the, you know, I have a book, I have a, a library behind this phone that has in excess of, a, of a 1,200 books, and they're all on the same subject. They're all on the same subject, right, about expanding the mind. And what's important is that, that you guys are being receiving this, and you're here watching this because you want this, and now it's your job to take those idea, ideas and to do two things, to expand your own experience with it, and to be able to give that experience to other people, to be able to share that with other people, those ideologies, so that you can uh, uh, help to, you know, the, the way that we change the planet, the way that we change our experience, excuse me, is, is through sharing. This is a sharing revolution. This is what's happening now. You can share negativity. You can sh share uh, Mustangs crashing at cars and coffees. You can share uh, people screaming at each other online at Walmarts. Or you can share things like this. That's your choice. You can choose to do that. Uh, but your thoughts, uh, th those experiences that you're putting out into the world, you have to ask yourself, is it creating more negativity and more frustration in the world? Or is it creating love and expansion and prosperity for everyone? That's an important thing to recognize as you share things through, through Facebook and everything else. It's important to recognize that. So getting in touch with source through meditation, through um, contemplation, uh, through the, the sources that we talked about, uh, you're, you're getting in touch with your subconscious and listening to the messages that come from your subconscious and following through with those messages 
is something that's going to expand and enhance your life as well as uh, others. Okay. Uh, good morning, Cynthia. Good to see you. Thanks for joining us today on Art Talk. Uh, this is episode nine, uh, 280. Uh, we do this live every weekday morning on Facebook, and uh, I appreciate you guys joining us. It does go up on YouTube afterwards, so we'll we'll have that up there permanently. Uh, number four is um, revere inspiration. Uh, the dialogue, you know, that that when you receive a message from your subconscious in the form of a hunch, in the form of inspiration, uh, is that you listen to that, is that you don't question it. You don't um, uh, say, ah, oh, I think that's a dumb idea, right? Generally, uh, uh, something comes to us and uh, all we need is one person to shoot it down for us to believe that it's a dumb idea and we're not going to follow through with it. Uh, uh, you know, something that, that came from here, you know that it came from, from, from inside you and you, you contemplated it, you knew it was right. And then you went and told somebody, you went and told the wrong person and that wrong person said, oh, that's stupid. That's a dumb idea. You shouldn't, you shouldn't do that. You know what, you know what you're going to have to do, go through to get, to implement that idea. And that's the problem. So we have to be very conscious about how, who we share our ideas with because, and I just just did this recently as I shared something online and it, it created a whirlwind of tumultuousness, right? Uh, because people are in fear and a lot of anxiety. And my, my intention was to see what kind of reaction I was going to get. And as a result, honestly, as a result of the reaction, there are many people that are not watching our talk anymore. There are many people that are not uh, following the things that we're doing. And although we have done thousands, literally thousands of videos, we have done uh, thousands, if not tens of thousands of posts on positivity, and we're always consistent. I post one thing. It's kind of like uh, uh, we had, uh, we're had we posting on Camaros all the time. Everybody loves Camaros. And then we post one challenger. And the people are like, oh, fuck that. Forget, forget that guy. And then they split and they hightail it out uh, because of one. And that's the mindset. That's the mindset. So uh, uh, it's important to understand we don't want to fall into that. We don't want to fall into into being one of those people that allows one little hurt to uh, to ruin our progress, right? Okay. So revere inspiration, listening listening to that still small voice inside you that says, if you do this, you'll move forward. You'll expand and enhance your experience. Uh, good morning, Fatal. Yes. What's up? Uh, Ken Bell and Chris Erickson. Good morning, gentlemen. Uh, very nice, Cynthia, saying hi to the boys. Uh, number five. Uh, when we do get that inspiration, when that inspiration does come to us, we need to move quickly. We cannot question it. If you get inspired, you need to get off your ass and start. Don't wait too long. I don't care what you're into. If you're driving, pull off. If you're in the middle of a meeting, get up and leave. Whatever it is, if you have an inspired thought that comes to you and you have this hunch that this is the right thing to do, you need to take action on it immediately. Do not wait. These are the seven habits of successfully creative people. Uh, this is what people that that people that are are creatively successful are doing. What they love, uh, they they listen to that still small voice and they run with it. They move quickly. Okay, it's important not to second guess these things. Okay, because you understand where they're coming from. You're thinking from a conscious mind standpoint. Okay, uh, number seven. Uh, sorry, sorry, number six. Uh, your number six is about focus. It's about avoiding the distractions of the world uh, and making a conscious effort to not watch on TV things that distract you. Uh, watch on TV the the uh, the news and the sensationalism. Is that you make a conscious effort about what you watch on television, about the movies that you go to, about the things that you listen to, about the podcasts, about the the videos that you watch, about the. Uh, the post that you look at, you want to make a conscious effort. Is this video expanding you? Looking at cool cars makes you feel great. Kind of awesome, right? Is that you want to be able to look at those things and expand through those things uh, and avoid the negativity, avoid negative people. If someone says, see, I have a rule with, with what we do and, and very few rules when it comes to our, our life and social media. But if someone makes one negative comment towards me in some way, they, it doesn't matter to me. I don't really care what they what they say. But they get blocked. They get they they get pushed aside. Nothing is going to distract me from uh, our agenda and our agenda. And I'm I'm not trying to be sensitive about about uh, uh, these kinds of people. But they're they're those kinds of people are in the world uh, not to hurt us, but they are our teachers. It's to remind us 
uh, to, to make progress. It's to remind us to stay conscious. It's to remind us that uh, you know, we're not going to be able to change everyone in the world, but we are going to be able to change our own personal experience, okay? And number seven, the last one, is uh, an unwavering faith. Unwavering faith. Uh, faith and belief that the direction that you're going, that the thing that you want is uh, already uh, it's already been created in your mind. It's already been created in your subconscious. Uh, all you need to do is take the steps, think the thoughts, uh, say the words, and uh, uh, the genie of the mind will reveal uh, the thing that you want in due time. And don't worry about whether it's it's coming to you. It's kind of like you order something on Amazon. You don't worry too much about you know what day specifically it's going to show up, what kind of package it's in. You know what what you know. You just put out there what it is that you want. You order it, and then you set it aside. Okay, so these are the steps. These are the seven steps of, of successfully creative people. We'll go through them one more time and I'll let you guys go. Number one, uh, get up early. Number two, be consistent with your narrative. Number three, get in touch with source, your source. Uh, number four, revere inspiration. Listen up, listen to people, listen to the dialogue. Uh, number five, uh, move quickly uh, with the question, uh, with the, the, the inspiration that comes to you. Don't hesitate. No hesitation. Move directly towards it. Uh, number six, focus and avoid distractions, whether it's distracting people or distracting situations. And number seven, an unwavering faith. All right? Get busy doing it, people. Today, you have an opportunity. Today is, uh, what is today, Wednesday? Yeah, today is Wednesday, and uh, it's the middle of the week. Uh, uh, try to apply some of these things for today. And uh, give me a report tomorrow. Give me a report. Uh, let me know how they worked out for you, okay? Have a spectacular day today, guys. Uh, be sure to check us out uh, uh, here on Facebook. We have several pages, including uh, the um, uh, custom car page and our YouTube channel. But uh, subscribe over at fireballtim.com for vlogs and all kinds of really cool stuff that's coming, all right? Have a spectacular day today, guys. We'll talk to you tomorrow.